Joining me now is Janae Wilson. She is the president and director counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Educational Fund, which they filed an amicus brief highlighting the importance of enforcing the 14th Amendment. In this case, I get to take off my glasses early in the show and talk to a lawyer. Um, so just talk to me about your perspective leading one of the country's most foremost and important civil rights organizations and the interest it has in this case around Donald Trump and the 14th Amendment. So our interest in this case could not be more uh, profound because we use the 14th Amendment to buttress so much of the work that we do. The 14th Amendment is central to protecting the rights of black Americans and every American and to ensure that we have equal protection under the law. Mm -hmm. In this case, we filed an amicus brief, as you mentioned, but we didn't file it on behalf of any party. We filed it on behalf of the 14th Amendment because we think that provision, that amendment to the Constitution is so central to the foundation of our democracy. And we are deeply concerned about the arguments that suggest that it is not self-executing, which means that for some reason you need a congressional action to bring it into force and that has never been the case for the 14th amendment that's never been the case for any of the reconstruction amendments they stand on their own bottom they are very clear in what they mandate for our democracy for our courts and for the american people and this should be no different we should not change our interpretation of the 14th Amendment because it could potentially have political consequences. Now, you mentioned Reconstruction Amendments, and I'm glad because I want us to give our audience a little bit of a history lesson. Can you talk about the origins of the 14th Amendment coming out of the Civil War and sort of its, their, its importance along with the other amendments and what they mean? Yes. Yeah, so, as we know, the Civil War ended in 1865. And just a year later, there was a proposal to amend the Constitution with the 14th Amendment to ensure a number of things, a number of things that were clear at the time were necessary to hold our democracy, that we needed to make sure that we were clear about who could be a citizen mm -hmm. and to make sure that those were inalienable rights, to make sure that we had clear mandates about protecting everyone on an equal basis, and that's the Equal Protection right. Clause of the 14th Amendment. And it was clear to us that and I say us as the American people, the people who uh, had a vision for this multiracial democracy, it was clear that we would have to have protections against those who didn't buy into this beautiful mosaic that we know is the promise of our country. Mm -hmm. And so the people who drafted and ultimately ratified the 14th Amendment understood that there might be those who at the time and going into the future would engage in uh, protests, which is perfectly lawful, but take it to the point of insurrection, bringing potential violence against this country to undo the promise of democracy, and that we needed some protections against that. That's Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. I want to sort of put on my Supreme Court justice robe, which I don't actually own, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and one of the things about this case that has always concerned me has been the due process argument, the notion that Donald Trump was not actually convicted or charged with insurrection criminally on any level. He obviously was found guilty in Colorado or liable on, at a civil, in, in civil court. And, of course, the standard there is a preponderance of the evidence as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt. What do you make of that as part of the conversation in terms of executing a removal on Section 3 grounds. So it's true that the 14th Amendment does include a due process clause. You cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. But that's not what's at issue here. What's at issue here is whether Colorado, a state that gets to determine who gets on the ballot in its state, who qualifies to be on the ballot, can interpret the Constitution based on how we've interpreted it as long as it's been in existence. That if there's a ban on insurrectionists and in being a officer of this country, then Colorado can say, we don't want to put someone on the ballot who we believe has engaged in insurrection. Mm -hmm. And there's ample evidence to support the allegation of insurrection. We saw the violence at the Capitol. We saw the dog whistles. We saw the failure to intervene when uh, Trump had power to do that. And again, just to be clear, 
what the Legal Defense Fund is advocating for is not a particular outcome, but we are asking that the court simply apply the 14th Amendment. Don't ignore it. Apply it. Whatever the outcome is, is irrelevant. We just cannot abandon our fidelity to the 14th Amendment. It would be a grave mistake, and this country has done it before, to ignore the Reconstruction Amendments and to ignore the mandate of equal protection. From one civil rights attorney to another, Janae, Janae Nelson, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Excellent me. Excellent conversation. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Will do.